Greetings, I am Pastor Weaver, and I'm so excited that you decided to watch this worship experience. I believe it will aid in your spiritual journey in some way. If you are local, I would love to meet you in person and pray with you. We believe we are doing something unique in the body of Christ, and we would love to have your support and partnership. Your prayers, your presence, your financial contributions will allow this ministry to continue to be a vehicle of transformation and to grow. Your intentional sustained support moving forward will be greatly appreciated. Thank you. Shalom. I will be reading from Proverbs 19, Psalms 51, followed by the Gospel of Matthew, fifth chapter, and they will be on your screen as I read them. Proverbs. He who gets wisdom loves his own soul. He who keeps understanding will find good. And from the book of Psalms, hide your face from my sins and blot out my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. And let us rise for our gospel passage. You won't be standing long. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. You may be seated. Gracious God, as we gather on this first Sunday of the year 2024, we pray that your guidance may rest upon us in a way that is that was unlike the years before. We pray, dear Lord, that in this moment, you may have our undivided attention so that we may grow deeper roots as disciples of Jesus the Christ and so that we can become the church, the community, the mother, the daughters, the, the sisters, the uncles, the aunts, the sons that you have called us to be. In this moment, in Christ's name we pray, so be it. Amen. interesting energy this morning. It's almost like a tired energy this morning. <laughs> almost like after Thanksgiving, which is interesting, interesting. So y'all must have been partying hard over, over the holidays. Okay, I can deal with it all. So these are the options for this morning. These are the options for this morning. This might be a little bit much for the first Sunday of the year, but we'll see how it goes. You can, you can just get your feet wet on the shores if you want. If, if you're tired, if you don't want to go too deep with it, we can just stay on the shore. You just get your feet wet, then you can go home. So that, that's one option. You can go snorkeling if you want, which is a little bit further out in the sea. You can see some things. We can do that this morning. Or you can go scuba diving, which is the most intense version of this message. So I'm going to start out scuba diving. If this becomes too much for you, if it becomes too much for you, we can go further back to the shore, OK? Is that fair? OK. So you already got the double clap. So. What we're going to do, what we're going to do this morning is I'm going to ask you a question. Do you want to still scuba dive? And if you do, double clap. Okay, so I'm going to ask that throughout. This might get intense. Maybe it won't. Maybe it won't. So let's practice it. Do you still want to scuba dive? Okay. The fulfillment 
of your wishes and desires will always be undercut by the poverty of your fundamentals. I said we were scuba diving. The fulfillment of whatever your resolutions are, whatever your desires are, whatever you would like to see in 2024 will always be undercut by the poverty of your fundamentals. There have been previous New Year's in which you have pursued resolutions before securing the fundamentals. There have been some years when you have resolved to make more money without securing the fundamentals of money management skills. There are some years when you have resolved to find a mate without securing the fundamentals of self-care and self-regard. There have been years in which you have resolved to find a way out of a relationship without securing the fundamentals of gratitude. You have resolved to get more education and, and training without securing the fundamentals of application. You have resolved to lose weight without securing the fundamentals of sleep hygiene and time management. You have resolved to become healthier and stronger without the fundamentals of life-giving habits and mentalities. You were tempted to become prosperous in a particular aspect of your life but the poverty of your fundamentals kept you stuck where you were. Do you still want to scuba dive? Mm, sound kind of weak. The script is very clear. It's very clear. It's hard to accomplish anything in the kingdom without first securing the proper without first securing the proper heart. And Matthew 5, 8 says it, says it best, blessed are the pure in heart, for they, for they shall see God. Interesting, us seeing God is not about what God is doing. Hmm. God, if you can just really show up this year, we would really appreciate it. But what if us seeing God has to do with the quality and condition of our own hearts? The heart needs to be right before any progress can be made in this year. The heart has to be right. Now, signs that you may need a heart adjustment. Sign number one. You keep blaming other people for your unhappiness. That's a sign you may need a heart adjustment. Let me take a detour, then I'll get back to the main road. But the detour connects to the main road. So, you know, I, I've been at St. Mark for 18 glorious months. And I, I love sharing church sociology 101 everywhere I go uh, with people I talk to and there are certain patterns and tendencies that you know that are just a basic everyone knows if you study sociology and it's common knowledge in the first the three to six months that's what we call the honeymoon period with the congregation and the pastor the honeymoon and then the next six months are evaluation and assessment I like this I don't like that I like this I don't like that but something very interesting happens in month 18. Not with y'all, but all those other churches out there. Not, not, not St. Mark, but all those other churches out there. In, in the 18th month of the pastor's tenure, the church begins to blame the pastor for its pre-existing conditions. Not y'all, not y'all, not y'all, not y'all. 
ha have you noticed that the furnace didn't stop working till Reverend Weaver got here? <laughs> it was real warm in here every Sunday. Then when he got here, it seemed to be breaking every other Sunday. I mean, he all right, he all right. I mean, he don't do nothing for me, but I, I'm just saying, I, I see him back here moving those dials. I don't know what he's doing. Have you noticed that it really didn't rain on Sunday morning until Reverend Weaver got here? <laughs> now it's like every other Sunday, it's always rain. Think about it. I'm just st starting the facts. 18 months is when the congregations begin to blame the pastor for its pre-existing conditions. You have to be very careful about blaming other people for your unhappiness. Because sometimes the person you are blaming is simply triggering your awareness of a condition that was already in your life. Do you still want to scuba dive? It's getting weaker and weaker. <laughs> There's a parable about a, about a husband that wakes up next to his wife on their, their third year anniversary, and he, he, he's very unhappy. And the husband turns to his wife, and she, she's still sleeping. The husband wakes up his wife and says, listen, I, I have to talk to you. I, I have something on my mind. I just have to get it off. And he turns to his wife and he says, listen, since I've married you, I've lost all my hair. <laughs> I never have any money. And my waistline is expanding day by day. Wife never opens her eyes. Says, listen, I, I, I love you very much. And that, that's why I married you. But when I, when I met you, you were bald, broke, and overweight. <laughs> The only thing I brought to this relationship was a mirror. Mm. The only thing I brought to this relationship was a mirror. When you are constantly blaming other people for your unhappiness, you may need a heart adjustment. You may need a heart adjustment. One more sign that you may need a heart adjustment. If, you, if the way other people live their lives always bothers you and frustrates you and irritates you, all frustrations should have expiration dates and expiration limits. It's, it's human to be frustrated. But if you are frustrated all the time by what someone else is doing, it may be your heart that needs to be adjusted instead of them doing something different. If I got frustrated by everything someone else did that I didn't like, I would never get anything done. Some of us are emotionally exhausted because we are frustrated by what everyone else is doing. Frustration has to have expiration dates, has expiration limits. Now, here we go. I'm, I'm scared to even ask this because you might go back to the shore. Do you still want to scuba dive? <laughs> Little better. What does the, you, you, you were about to lose this sermon, but you, you got it back now. What does a proper heart look like? What does a proper heart look like? Now, a biblical definition of a proper heart, which we can use, is simply this. A combination of your intention, motivation, and discipline. That's the biblical, one biblical conception of the heart. The heart is a combination of your intentions, your motivations, and your discipline all wrapped together as one. That's a good place to take notes. Let, let me break this down a little bit further. What, what do I mean by intention? One way we can look at that is intention is basically your destination. 
put that first slide up. Intention is essentially your destination. Where are you trying to get to today? Where are you trying to get to by the end of this month? Where are you trying to get to by the end of this quarter and year? When you get up in the morning, you need to have an intention. You need to have a, 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 a destination in mind that you are trying to get to. So the heart is part of where are you trying to go? What are you trying to do? Where are you trying to get to? Proper heart. That's the first thing. Another aspect of the heart is the motivation. Now, motivation can be looked at as your fuel. The fuel. What energizes you? What gives you the energy to get to the places that you are trying to get to? See, some people have a clear intention, but they're not very focused on refueling themselves to get to the places they're trying to go. And so you may have a clear destination, but you're not living a life which energizes you, therefore you can't get to where you're trying to go or get to where God is trying to call you. So, you, so there's intention, there's motivation. Motivation is your fuel, what energizes you. And then the, the last one is discipline. And discipline is, is like the road that you travel on, the road that keeps you on track. Because sometimes you know where you want to go, and you even have the energy to get there, but you keep on getting sidetracked by other things because you don't have the discipline to stay on the path that's going to get you to the destination that God is calling you. So the heart encompasses where you want to go, getting the energy you need to get there, and also having the discipline to stay on track in the meantime. Are you still with me? Intention motivation, discipline. Now, I want to quiz you. Let's stop right there because that's a lot. Intention is what? Motivation is what? Discipline is what? Discipline is what? Road, good. Reverse. Destination is what? Destination is? Fuel is? The road is, okay, good. One more time. Intention, motivation, discipline, good, okay. If you feel stuck in your life, if you feel stuck in your journey with God, when is the last time you examined your heart? That's the key. That really is the key to anything you believe God is calling you to do this year. It starts with the heart. And when is the last time you examine your intentions, your motivations, and your discipline, the destination you want to get to, the fuel that you need to get there, the road that's going to keep you on track? If, you, if you're not clear about every single one of those things, it's going to be hard for you to do what God wants you to do this year. Now repeat after me. Where am I going? What is fueling me? What is keeping me on track? Those are the questions. Every morning you get up, every morning, where am I going? What, what, what am I trying to accomplish this day? Where, where am I going this day? Where do I want to end up at the end of this year? Where do I believe God is, is, is calling me, leading me to? Where am I going? And then the, the second question that you need to ask every single day is, what am I going to do that gives me life to make it to the end of this day? And that's a question we don't ask. Sometimes we just try to gut through the day. And sometimes, it's, sometimes we're not, it's not that we're doing too much. It's that we're doing the wrong things. We're doing things that don't energize us. Or we're, we're, we're neglecting things that energize us. And that's the fuel that we need to get to the places that God is calling us to go. What?
what is fueling you? What, what gives you life? What energizes you? If you are a disciple of Jesus the Christ, there's no way that you can be energized without connecting back to the creator. So if you're a disciple of Jesus, if you are not doing things in your day, continually in your day, that connect you back to the creator, by definition, you don't have the fuel you need to get to whatever destination you're trying to get to, what God is calling you to do. You have to be connected. Where am I going? What is fueling me? And what is keeping me on track? Now, this is important. What are your disciplines that allow you to not get distracted by what other people are doing or saying or not doing. You have to have a road that keeps you on track because if not, if you don't have a destination, your distractions will become your destination. Where am I headed in 2024? What is fueling me in 2024? What will keep me on track? in 2024? These are the questions. These are the questions that keep us going. Is this too much for you? Do you, do you still want to scuba dive? Okay, all right, all right. Just asking, because y'all kind of quiet on me. Some of us are exhausted all of the time because we're doing the wrong things. Not because we're doing too much. Sometimes we're doing too much, but many times because we're doing the wrong things. Not engaging in activities that give life, not connecting to the creator through the course of the day. What are our disciplines, our habits, our mentalities? Creating a discipline is like paving a new road. It is difficult. Some of us need to create new disciplines this year to stay on track. And it's difficult, but once that road is paved, it, it's a lot smoother after that. What are your disciplines going to be in 2024 that are going to keep you on track? Let's talk about the proverb before we close. Proverbs 19.8, I discussed this in more detail in the, in the meditation group. It's translated literally, the one who obtains a heart. The one who gets a heart is the one who loves their own soul. Not the one who has wisdom, the one who gets a heart is the one who loves their own soul. Someone who truly loves their soul is a person who seeks after the proper heart first and foremost. When you have the proper heart, I can protect my own soul. What do I mean? When I have the proper heart, I am not jealous of what you're doing and where you're going because I've already set my destination. Your destination might not be my destination. I'm happy for you that you've arrived at these wonderful places in your life, but my heart is set, my, my heart is right, and therefore I have a clear destination of where I'm going. I don't have to be jealous of you because I know where I'm headed. I know what my destination is. My intentions are clear. I love my own, that's what keeps my soul protected. I'm not fatigued by life's challenges because I obtain my fuel daily. Motivation. Doesn't mean life won't be difficult, doesn't mean life won't be hard, but throughout the course of my day and month and week, I'm refueling myself so I won't be fatigued by life's challenges. Motivation. I'm not distracted by nonsense because I have the discipline to stay on the path and stay focused. What you're doing is not frustrating me, it's not bothering me because at the beginning of the year, I set up a road, I'm staying on track and I'm not going to get distracted by nonsense that is not connected to my destination. I'm able to preserve the tranquility of my inner constitution. Was that too much for you? I'm able to preserve 
the tranquility of my inner constitution because I have the proper heart. Intentions, motivation, discipline. A godly heart must be the foundation and start for anything and everything we do this year. And in 2024, we are going to get, we going to get our hearts right. We have to get our hearts right because if the heart is right, then everything else will follow. We'll be stronger, we'll be better in our service to Elohim. This year must be the year of the heart. It must be the year of the heart. So I want us to, to be very mindful as we, as we transition into our moment of communion. And I want, as we lead into communion, the first communion of the year, I want you to repeat after me. Well, first get your communion kits out. Don't open them, just get them out. Just get them out and hold them up. Repeat after me. Hide your face from my sins. Blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God. And renew a steadfast spirit within me. Amen, so be it. Take and eat and take and drink. Going into the year of 2024 with clean hearts, fresh spirits. The blood of Christ shed for you, take and drink. Left to hold Berali Elohim, Ruhana Hona Jesper Kerbi. Left to hold Berali Elohim, Ruhana Hona Jesper Kerbi. Left to hold Berali Elohim, Ruhana Hona Jesper Kerbi. Create in us a clean heart, O Lord, and place within us a steadfast and renewed spirit. Loving God, as we partake of your holy supper, as we move into this new year with a sense of intention, with motivation, with discipline, we pray, dear Lord, that our hearts may be right so that we may become the people that you are calling us to be, so that we can arrive in the destinations that you are calling us to arrive in, so that we can become the church, the community, the people of God that you are calling us to be in this year. Dear Lord, we pray that as we partake of the Lord's Supper, that we would remember the taste of forgiveness. And that taste will not only be in our mouths, but in our hearts, so that we may be forgiving, so that we may be merciful to those who we meet in the course of this week, to those who have hurt us, to those who have frustrated us. We pray for your mercy upon our hearts. In Christ's name we pray. So be it. Amen. Amen.